Kia ora team Welcome to Big Boys Boxing And today I have this news here Michelle Wallace is going to be the next opponent for Tony Yoka On the 28th of September in France So not the best fight for Tony Yoka in my opinion But not the worst either I mean we got to remember Tony Yoka is only six fights into his pro career. This will be his seventh fight. So a quick look at Tony Yoka. As we know, he's the 2016 Super Heavyweight Olympic Champion. It says he's six foot seven here, but I thought he was more like six foot six. But what's an inch, man? What's an inch? Um, he has an 82 inch reach and he can box I mean the dude's pretty smart about how he boxes many people say he doesn't have much power but I'm not a big believer in that I think he can punch hard when he wants to um, he's had one run out recently against Alexander Dimitrenko and he got him out of there in round three it was a, a very much a feel out round the first round then he started turning it up a bit in the second round. Then he started really pouring it on in the third and broke Dimitrenko's will. He pretty much gave up. But it's nothing new for Alexander Dimitrenko. When he reaches his level and finds out uh, that he can't beat his opponent, he tends to quit. But prior to that, Tony Yoka had a, a bit of a hiatus, about a year. He missed a couple of drug tests with the French authority and they handed him a f suspension he could have got a license and fought elsewhere on the planet but he chose not to his suspension is over and he's back into it now uh, prior to that he fought Dave Allen um, now that fight went to the final round before the referee stopped it in the 10th and Dave Allen copped a hell of a hiding in that round it was reported after the fight by Dave himself that he was having dizzy spells um, not good not good at all he took a hell of a hiding and I thought the referee should have stopped that fight earlier but it is what it is um, before that he's fought a few guys that you may recognize Cyril Leonette that was a domestic dust up um, a few guys that you probably wouldn't recognize on there but Jonathan Rice is his second professional fight uh, Jonathan Rice is a very clever boxer um, so that was a pretty pretty good second fight for Tony Yoka but um, yeah so that's Tony Yoka's background Mercia Wallace 20 and 2 with no draws he's German He's six foot five, has a 77 inch reach, and doesn't have a great winning record. He does have a win under his belt since his last loss against this guy. I'm not going to try and pronounce his name. Um, the guy was five and four at the time. It was pretty much a run out, and he got a TKO win in the second round of six in that. But prior to that, he fought Efer Jugba, and he got stopped in three uh, in two rounds. The referee stopped it. Uh, Wallace was overwhelmed by volume and power, couldn't take it, and the ref made a good stoppage in that fight. And prior to that, he took his first loss against Christian Hammer, got knocked the bug out in that one uh, in the fifth round of twelve. But Prior to that, there's not a lot of depth in his resume. Um, if we go down through a few names, you may recognize there, but the one that sticks out to me is Avika Bakurin. Uh, at the time, he was 23, 8, and 1, and that fight went the distance. He got, uh, Michelle Wallace got the nod on that fight, but that fight in particular tells me a bit about Michelle Wallace's potential lack of power. 
Avika Bakurin has also fought at Cruiserweight and an up and coming elite level prospect should be able to get this guy out of there so him not being able to do so does give me a good idea of the level of Michelle Wallace so the fight itself how I think it's probably going to go is somewhat similar to how Ephra Jogba got rid of Michio Wallace. However, Tony Oka may take a little more time because he's a bit more of a boxer in those early rounds to fill out Michio Wallace, get his timing sorted, get the movement of Wallace sorted out because Wallace is a bit of a boxer. But I don't think Michio Wallace is going to last more than about five rounds in this matchup. So I, I wouldn't actually be surprised if Yoka gets him out of there in the third round. Um, what I will be surprised is if this fight goes the distance. But this fight, like I say, I think it's just a bit of a run out for Yoka. Apparently, uh, he's building towards a domestic dust up against fellow Frenchman Johan Dorper later in the year. Now that's a very good fight in my opinion, particularly for somebody who's only going to be uh, potentially 7-0 at the time. So I'll be tuning in to watch this fight, it's in France, uh, just to get a good look at Tony Oka. Uh, I enjoy watching the man box, he's full of skill and has a bright future in front of him. He's one of my top three prospects along with Philip Hergovic and Ephra Jogba. Uh, so, we'll see how he goes. But uh, that's it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And give me the thumbs up if you have enjoyed the video. That's it. Big Boys Boxing, I'm out. See you.